Hey there, everyone. How's it going? I'm thrilled to dive into a fascinating topic with you all. The iconic Alfa Romeo Alfetta GT, GTV, GTV6, and GTGR2, and... Let's get ready to explore these beauties together. The Alfetta series, which are roughly defined herein as any of the front-engined, the Dion transaxle cars made from 1973 to 1992, were created to replace the existing solid axle Alphas and to significantly improve the highly praised handling characteristics of the Alphas produced up to that point. The Alfetta took its name from the famous 158-159 Alfa Romeo Grand Prix cars, raced from 1939 to 1951. These unbeatable race cars featured a similar transaxle layout and were called the small Alpha or Alfetta because of the 1,500cc displacement. However, a major difference was that the Grand Prix car left the clutch at the engine end, a difference that, as we shall see, meant a great deal. All in all, the Grand Prix car was one of the most successful and perfect front-engined Grand Prix cars ever constructed. The Alfetta series was not, and the name as applied to the production car didn't last long, which was probably a good thing. Still, we had hope. The Alfetta was conceived under the technical direction of Rudolf Ruska, who had been recalled by Alfa to replace the great doctor Orazio Sata Puliga. In every way, the conception, the idea, the dream of the new Alfetta was thoroughly commendable and held great promise. On paper, there was little to fault. Here was a car with the traditional 2-litre 4, 2,000cc for the US market and available in both 1.8 and 1.6 versions in Europe, now producing about 140 GP with a completely new chassis with torsion bars instead of coils up front a De Dion rear axle with the inboard disc brakes and the clutch integral with the transmission. The combination meant a 50, 50 weight distribution, less unsprung weight, no axle tramp, and excellent handling characteristics for both road and track. The in-house designed Alfetta 1.8 sedan, first seen in May of 1972, was a refreshing change from the previous and bulky 2000 Berliner with modern instrumentation, plenty of greenhouse and more interior room despite a shorter wheelbase. It was truly a sedan that could handle and accommodate five people with both ease and comfort. Even with the 1800cc version, performance was more than adequate and at the time one of the hottest sedans on the market but that was nothing compared to the Alfetta GT 1.8, which was designed by Giugiario and introduced to the press in June 1974. The design has held, and today it is as attractive as it was in the early 1970s. Plus, the CD factor was an excellent 0.39. It was a successful attempt to replace the classic Bertone Sprint Coupe, a very mean feat. The interior could be described as ultra-modern, and Alpha placed the tachometer directly in front of the driver with the speedometer in the center, a purposeful snub to the new US 55 miles per hour speed limit. The Alfetta GT had charm, engineering, beauty, and class. Nevertheless, the attempt to maintain a reliable and vibration-free drivetrain was valiant, but to a large degree in vain. In the mid-1960s, starting with the 275 GTB, Ferrari also decided to place the clutch and transmission with the rear axle. Despite a lot of development time, superb quality and engineering, the problems associated with the drive shaft turning at engine speed were never fully resolved, despite the use of an enclosed torque tube and eventually a full integrated solid drivetrain from stem to stern. Years later, however, Ferrari tried it again with the 456 GT, which also used a transaxle layout and enhanced for the 612 Scaglietti. That Alpha would be able to solve the same problems on a mass production basis was unlikely. 
During the development stage, the prototypes had constant vibration maladies, in addition to headaches with the long-distance gear change, delaying the introduction of the Alfetta by almost a year. However, according to a reliable source at Alpha, by design the shift throw was not to everyone's liking and was never intended to be a rock crusher hearse type box and linkage, but the design execution worked extremely smoothly in regular use by careful drivers. The shifting of the 1975 model was superb and only improved somewhat by the redesign of the center rubber U-joint in 1976 and ultimately with the 1985 isostatic shift mechanism installed in production on 1985 to 1986 GTV6S. With the new U-joint in production, the complaints directed to Alfa Romeo owner relations essentially disappeared. Even though most of the problems with the gear shift linkage were resolved, gone was the golden wand of the earlier five-speed cars, which the gear lever directly attached to the transmission. This was much lamentable. The first production, Alfetas lacked the quality of previous Alphas. Seats became unstitched, fragile switches often broke, dash pods and glove boxes warped in the noonday sun. Where body rust had once been limited to wheel arches and rockers, after a few years it now appeared around the front and rear windows, the front shock mounts, the edge of the fenders, and other gruesome places one never bothered to look. Two other foibles affected Alphas of the period, a tendency for the oil passage crank plugs to fall out, causing a reduction in oil pressure and the discovery of the pop rivet. Said our reliable source, who had access to all the warranty claims, Hundreds of pop rivets were used in production of the Alfetta body, a foreshadowing of the heavy use and reliance on today's high-value Audi and Jaguar aluminum chassis structures, for example, not to mention the hundreds of such rivets used on new 2015 Model 150 Ford aluminum truck. Some people criticized the production technique at the time, but the Alfetta unibody remained a tough, strong, rigid, and rattle-free execution to this every day. With each model, the cars were improved in every respect. Commented our ex-Alpha employee, some of the improvements in the Alfetta series came through the use and installation of high-grade German components from Bosch, for example, and in the case of the 1978 sport sedan, a new and bulletproof ZF three-speed transmission. Overall, the Alfetta 116 series suffered no higher a number of warrantable defects than its European contemporaries did. Each of those had their own unique set of defects and anomalies, some of a vastly more alarming character. Ironically, as the cars got better, the Alfetta name was dropped. Consumers in the US knew nothing of the Alfetta 158-159S, and in Europe, Alfetta meant small alpha, which was not a positive term. The world was changing, and in 1986, Alfa even offered and pushed the first automatic transmission in an Alfa Romeo on the sport sedan, primarily because it made for a much smoother, long-lasting drivetrain. Alfa had another trick for the ailing Alfetta GT, and that was to install the new V6. This made a totally different animal out of the Giugiaro Coupe and led to the Alpha 75, AKA Milano, in the US. By the time the Milano was introduced in late 1986, it was hard to tell that the car had a drive shaft turning at engine speed and the quality was further improved. It seemed as though Alpha had finally gotten its act together. But the Milano and its smaller European counterpart, the Giulietta, would truly be the last of the real Alfa Romeos. Front-wheel drive would now prevail at an Alfa Romeo now owned by Fiat. We have come to the discussion of the legendary Alfa Romeo Alfetta GTV6, my dear Alphaholics. The GTV6, a version of the GTV with the SOHC V6 2.5L engine from the Alpha 6 luxury sedan was released. As a result, the hood received a bulge to clear the top of the intake and became its most pronounced feature. 
with Bosch fuel injection instead of the six downdraft Delorto carburetors in the early Alpha 6 installation, the V6 was much easier to start and retained its state of tune much better. The V6 received rave reviews from the motoring press, which had previously lambasted the same engine in the Alpha 6 because of the carburetor problems. It found its true home in the GT V6, where it could stretch its legs better than in the less sporting Alpha 6 sedan, including winning the European Touring Car Championship an unprecedented four years in succession, 1982 to 85, the British Touring Car Championship in 1983 at the hands of Andy Rouse, as well as many other racing and rallying competitions. The fuel injection installation eventually made it into the second series of the Alpha 6 as well. The GTV went through a number of revisions, including a new gear ratios and an updated interior in 1984. South African models were first assembled at automaker's Rosslyn plant, located outside Pretoria. These early 1973 models were manufactured alongside Datsuns. From 1974, South African Alfettas were manufactured at Alfa Romeo's own Brits plant. South Africa was one of two markets to have a turbocharged GTV6 with a Garrett turbocharger and a Naker intake. An estimated 750 were assembled before all production ceased in 1986. The South African market also introduced the 3.0L GTV6, predating the international debut of the factory's 3.0L engine in 1987. Approximately 200 were built in South Africa for racing homologation. To this day, the GTV6 remains the quintessential Alfa Romeo for South Africans. Reeves Callaway, founder of Callaway Cars, and famous for his various modifications of Chevrolet Camaros and Corvettes, modified about 30 GTV6S to Callaway Twin Turbo specification for Alfa Romeo Inc., the North American importer. The Alfa Romeo Alfetta GT Gara 2 is a former Auto Delta official car with an important sporting history. Its grand touring nature was transformed into that of a racing car by the hands of the official sports department, according to the specifications of Garcha 2, and it is dressed in the most classic Alfa Romeo rally livery, Alfa Red, with a matte black bonnet. Born with one. 8L engine displacement, it was upgraded to 2L thanks to the increased bore. The gearbox is a 5-speed Auto Delta, and it also featured a limited slip differential and ventilated Lockheed brakes, and the Alfetta developed a power of around 180 GP and reached 210 GP with the 16-valve head and fuel injection. The chassis, no. 009461 was one of the nine Alfetta GTs prepared by Alfa Romeo for the 1975 rally season and is one of the two surviving and the only red-colored Alfetta GT. The other is the yellow chassis No. 001424. It debuted together with the entire Alfa Romeo team at the Costa Brava rally in February 1975 with the crew Balestrieri Nanini. And a month later in March, the car scored the first significant result for Alfa Romeo with crew Balestrieri Gili at the rally Lyon Charbonnier, finishing in third place overall and first in Garage 2. The car ran eight races between France and Italy, winning its group twice at the aforementioned rally Lyon Charbonnier and with crew Svizzero Massetto at the San Giacomo rally in May 1975, the third round in Italian Rally Championship. The official Alfa Romeo drivers, Balestrieri, Svizzero and Andruet, raced with this car. In 1976, after the decision not to continue in rallies, Alfa Romeo sold the Alfettas and our car was bought by the Jolly Club of Milan. With the technical director, Mauro Nocentini, the car continued its competitive career with some private drivers of Milan. In 1982, the car was passed to the Tevar team, owned by the Tevar SRL company, with which it made some races 
and then ended up in the hands of a private collector. In 2016, the former Alfa Romeo X driver Chico Svizero, after many years, manages to buy the car and devotes himself to a conservative restoration to keep the originality of the car intact, following his memory and the numerous photographs in his possession. The restoration involved the seat lining, which was replaced with a correct one, and a revision of the mechanics was carried out with the replacement of worn parts. At the end of the restoration, the Alfetta returned to participate with Chico Svizero in some events in Italy, but never did any competition. The car has all the details of the Alfetta GT X Auto Delta Works car, including some peculiar ones, the footrest, made for the charming Biche, Andruet's co-driver, which, being short in stature, needed support to anchor himself to the seat, the box for the intercom, branded Auto Delta, plastic bucket seats, wooden gear knob, and finally, an important detail, the window to access the rear shock absorbers. In the years following the restoration, the car was seen and recognized by the former Alfa Romeo engineer Arnaldo Tonti, and also by the former driver Amilcare Balestrieri, each of whom wrote and signed their testimony on the authenticity of the car. The car has never raced since. It is featured in the book Alfa Romeo and Auto Delta in rallies, and in an article in the Italian magazine Ruot Classique of January 2019 by Emmanuel Sanfront. The car is accompanied by the original Milan plates and the original booklet from Auto Delta SPA. The preparation of the car with GOR 2 specifications still includes a very long list of details. Battery switch, Halder Tripmaster, four Corello Megalux additional front headlights, widened fenders, magnesium rims, carved slick tires, stainless steel open exhaust, complete mechanical preparation, racing seats with four-point belts, roll bar, reinforced and lightened body, and Auto Delta intercom system. Wow, what an incredible ride exploring the Alfa Romeo Alfetta GT, GTV, GTV6, and GTGR2 together. But wait, the adventure doesn't end here. We're dying to know what you thought about it all. Don't be shy, share your thoughts in the comments below. And hey, while you're at it, show us some love with a thumbs up, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more exciting content. Until next time, folks, farewell for now.